Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Working Title Milan podcast that we have no clue what we want to call yet. Martino Puccio, Matt Santangelo, and our special guest today, uh, finally our first guest from an opposing team on this podcast, Sean McIntosh, Charlotte FC Chief Fan Officer and the host of the Lazio World Podcast. Matt and myself have been on there before. He's with Stephen K. Moore. Sean, so great to talk to you. MLS season's coming around the corner. Lazio in the thick of a European titles chase spot, I guess, or whatever. Not a title, but a, but a European spot chase. Um, big match between these two clubs tomorrow. But first of all, how are you and how's everything going? Good, man. Uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Always a pleasure to chat whenever our two clubs uh, meet, you know, and, and always seems to be a really big fixture for both sides, you know, and uh, this one is no different. A lot on the line uh, for both clubs and uh, hard to believe that, uh, you know, a result going a certain way puts us in, in really similar uh, table standings, you know, given uh, at least from my side, given a, a little bit of turbulence uh, recently in, in some standings or some fixtures that I, I certainly would have hoped went a different way, but uh, you know, here we are in a big one. Yeah. Lecce was, uh, was not kind to either of us, um, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let's get into this. We have not played each other um, since that match where Sandro Tonali uh, basically took over um, and scored the late winner. Um, so it's been a little while now. Lazio yeah. obviously have changed some things up. Last time we were talked- center back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, which we could just basically get right into, right? <laughs> because last time we all talked, um, Matt, Sean, we were basically under the impression with the way things were going was that Roman Yoli was on his way out of Milan and the likely destination was with Lazio. There were some Juventus links, but it's well documented on how big of a fan uh, Romagnoli is of Lazio. That infamous picture of him uh, with the jersey on and the shaved head that a bunch of people used to use, um, especially when Roma fans started talking. So it was definitely something some Lazio Milanisti got along with. Um, But yeah, I mean, just a way better system for Alessio now. He's done very well this season. I think he's easily been better than any center back that Milan has had uh, this year, especially with our defensive woes. Um, Matt, what I want to know your opinion real quick on what you've seen from Alessio this year in, in, in the Saudi system. And then, and then Sean, just talk about the overall presence of what he's brought to Lazio, because this is really someone that you could depend upon for actually like the next decade with the way center backs really uh, um, age in this day and age. I think Romagnoli's been, um, you know, he, he's he's the type of center back that I think that Lazio obviously needed in the back to stabilize things. Um, but I also think, you know, the years of experience as a captain, a leader um, at Milan, I think really were um, important aspects or components that he has brought to this Lazio back line. And I think it's a lot, it's, it's a lot to do with, um, you know, playing in a team that he had to play with under pressure. You know, when he joined Milan from, from Roma, you know, there was a, it was a big money move, 25 million. It's crazy to think that, you know, that was a figure back in 2015, 2016. And we're Milan are still quite not getting over that threshold as often as maybe we'd expect when it comes to transfers. But he was a young kid at that point, 21 years old. And he, you know, had multiple partners come in and out. Zapata, Nexus, like all these different guys. And Bonucci. <laughs> Bonucci, like, and he, and he was the constant. I know his last year, year plus um, wasn't the greatest for Milan. But I think he settled in extremely well at Lazio. He seems right at home um, at Lazio. And I think a lot of this is attributed to the fact that he's not having to play so high up. He's able to just sit back, you know, cover his area, cover his ground, and be in positions where he's not having to chase players down and really you know, get into foot races where that's that's what tends to give him and give him some trouble. So I think that look, you know, the results that you know Sean has alluded to and that we've seen, you know. They haven't been maybe as good as they have been in the in the beginning of the season, where they were, you know, statistically they were the best defensive team for a good stretch of games. They've kind of come back, regressed a little bit. But I think if you look at the way this team is shaped up, um, year two with Maurizio Sarri at Lazio, I think you're really looking at Romagnoli for free. And I know they got Provadel back there too, who's been incredible as well for a very cheap price. But to get someone like Romagnoli who has that establishment um, as as a, as a defender a leader in the back I think it's been um, it's been a great fit for him and it's been actually great for me to see because I think that people gave Romagnoli so much shit in the, the sort of tail end of his career at Milan but this way this guy was the consummate professional he never dragged his contract talks into the into the games or into the media he handled everything with class and the way he went out as a champion 
was was the right way for him to go out. So I, I'm happy to see him doing well at Lazio. Yeah, look, um, you, you, you said it. Um, this guy, uh, obviously, the experience at Milan, winning a Scudetto, uh, being at a club that obviously holds itself at a really high standard and playing mm-hmm. with players that, you know, when they come in, there's an expectation and, and being a consummate professional and then bringing that to a club uh, that has, especially at the center back position, you know, been in, in, in a lot of disarray and, and, and failed to have a ton of consistency. And, mm-hmm. you know, our, our, our leader at that position, you know, was going through his own challenges with the curva, with contract negotiations, with issues up and down, you know, in, in, in Acerbi, who, you know, unfortunately was at a position where he couldn't be at the club any longer. And so to bring in a guy um, immediately who has that connection with the club, but that brings in just incredible experience at an age, you know, where, where he's essentially just right at the, for the center back, right. The start of a prime. Um, I mean, it, it couldn't have worked out any better for him. You know, we've got a player like Nicola Casale uh, that is 23, 24 years old, you know, who is able to now play with a guy like Romagnoli, who's essentially been in every situation in Serie A. So, um, you know, and, and, and while we've had a couple matches that haven't gone our way, you know, only Napoli has allowed fewer goals than Lazio, yeah. you know, especially after the thumping Juve took to Napoli. But and you Atalanta, know, for, yeah. for us, it's it, it's something that we haven't seen in a while. But we're so um, used to seeing us have to score a ton of goals. But you know, particularly for a, a Maurizio Sarri team, who now you know really holds possession well. But then you know, when you've got somebody at that back that just is, is a consistent calming presence. Again, leaning on players like Casale, who's, who's able to um, make some mistakes and not have to worry about it leading to a goal, knowing that you've got a a Romagnoli behind you. I mean, it it just helps everybody. It allows a player like Milinkovic Savic to be a little bit more free will um, moving into the attack without having to just do so much of, of the work he's had to do. He's obviously turned himself into a great, you know, box to box two way player. Uh, but I, I think it allows a player like uh, even Milinkovic the opportunity to play a little bit more advanced, you know, so he's had such an effect, you know, on, on both sides of the ball and, and consummate professional, you know, and, and you can see it and he really wears that badge, you know, um, like it's his heart. And, and for us, you know, Laziali, we, we've obviously, it's been a dream signing, you know, for us to kind of bring him here. But um, yeah, the, the effect that he's had is has been pretty resounding. I'm going to say this too. I think it's interesting. And then Martino, you can carry us forward. But the 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 age that Romagnoli has arrived um, in Rome with Lazio is, and in the fashion for which obviously being a free transfer, it feels like to your, you know, to your point of saying he's rounding into like a new prime, the same age that Barzai joined Juventus at. Like, 27 28 and you're thinking who is this guy they're getting for free and then you throw him into that team and there are many years where people were saying Barzai was actually the best most consistent of that three in that back line so uh, I'm not saying it's going to be the same thing but you get my point right like a yeah f- getting Look at that, 27 Achebe, Achebe was older Achebe yeah. was older when he came to Lazio and you know that's that's when he he earned his place at the national team yep. because of his tenure at Lazio so you know, we, we, we all know that, you know, Romagnoli uh, five or so years ago was heralded as the next great yeah. Italian Paul center Dada, back. Dada, Dada, so, yeah. so many expectations, uh, you know, and so many expectations going to Milan, mm-hmm. you know, the weight of the great center backs that you guys have had. And, you know, maybe that played a, a role in, in just this daunting, incredible pressure, you know, around a club that, you know, for you guys were underperforming. And, and so I'm yeah. sure he got a lot of, um, flack and maybe you know some of it was not necessarily fair given where you guys were as a club right. but maybe. look he he's got an opportunity to hopefully um, you know, shine a light for Mancini and 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 we know that yeah. our center back situation on the national yeah. team completely different discussion hasn't been um, you know where we want it to be so I, I'm hoping that you know he gets noticed and, and gets that opportunity back yeah, number thirteen and the long hair as a as a Lazio fan is is a difficult thing to do at Milan, as we know. Um, but yeah, let's 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 talk about what we're supposed to expect with the with the starting eleven. There's two massive massive names out in this one. Teo Hernandez is out with muscle fatigue. 
Immobile is out for Lazio. You could argue they're both just as valuable for their teams, considering Milinkovic and Leao are probably the most valuable at this rate um, mm-hmm. where they are in their careers. But Immobile plays very well against Milan in the past. Teo Hernandez on his day is the best fullback in this league. Um, this is this is a very interesting one. We are in your house. Um by no means an easy place to play. This is on a Tuesday. Again, very strange. We know because it's uh, the Supercopa was taking place last week. We won't talk about that too much. But I think overall expectations for this one, this is a very huge one in terms of momentum for top four um, and the direction we're going in. Because again, talk about poor results on both sides as, as of late. Um, Milan... They haven't lost a game in Serie A since the restart, but it felt like they did lose a couple of them by their performances, by the way they dropped points against Roma at home with those two goals on set pieces and then what happened against Lecce. And the same thing with Lazio against Lecce, where you see these great performances and then it kind of drops off. And unfortunately now, this is kind of what we talked about last year with Lazio. Great starting 11, but what happens when Immobile misses time? Because... As healthy as he was for years, you get into your 30s. You consistently play in a league like this that is physical and daunting. You play a lot of matches, and there's not really the greatest replacement, unfortunately. I think it catches up to you. How do you think you guys kind of handle this with with the formation coming into this? Who do you kind of expect to step up and try and score? I know it could easily be said it's Milinkovic because he could do anything like he did uh, last time we faced you within the first like 15 minutes, I believe. So... Is it him who steps up? Is it Romagnoli that breaks me in these hearts? Uh, who, do you, who do you think really uh, puts you guys in the driver's seat for this one? Well, look, um, I mean, the easy answer is uh, for me, well, not even easy. Look, you <clears throat> mentioned Milinkovic Savic, but I, I think it's got to be Felipe Anderson because he's <laughs> he's the one slotted in uh, to play that number nine role in, in, in a very different manner than the way Cheeto plays. Cheeto uh has always given this team a focal point and and not only does he give them a focal point but what he does that he doesn't get a ton of credit for especially his work on the national team is the space that he creates for others and and he just makes the game a little bit easier you know he may not be uh the most clinical finisher in the entire world now he's he's clinical enough to bag you know consistently 20 plus goals a, a season so you know, by no means am I saying he's not clinical, right? But, you know, he's not going to be your Erling Haaland's out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but what he does that is absolutely elite is the pressure he puts on a defense, the way that he makes his runs, the way that he times his runs, you know, the, the way that he helps his defense out. You know, he's so involved in dropping back. And then the, the, the way he pressures on a counter is is absolutely elite. And, and he puts himself in position enough times in a match where if he's playing, he's coming out with a goal. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have that. And, and Lazio uh, quite negligent, perhaps the only professional football team in the world to not have a second striker on their roster. Um, So they find themselves in a position where they've got to play Felipe Anderson, a winger, you know, at that striker role because nobody else can play it, you know, and, and, and Felipe, you know, he lacks in his finishing ability, you know, mm-hmm. but where he makes up for, you know, is, is he is a player, you know, in, in the way that we're going to play is, is going to be a little bit less predictable. You're going to see a little bit more movement, you know, what will likely be a front three of, of uh, Zakani, uh, Felipe in the middle, and then Pedro on the right. You'll probably see a little bit more interchange between Pedro and Felipe, you know, which, which may hopefully confuse your defense a little bit. Um, but it's just, it's a lack of a focal point uh, between, you know, a, 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 uh, I think you're going to see Alberto start in this match. He's been playing really, really well, you know, after a, a couple of uh, tough spells early in the season. I think Sadi trusts him now. So I think you're going to see a midfield that includes Alberto and Milinkovic Savic and, and Cataldi. But the link up between Alberto and Chiro Immobile is just, it's second to none. And you don't quite have that with Felipe. So he's going to have to do a much better job of just finishing, holding up play a little bit, um, helping his, his other players like Zakani, giving them a little bit of space to do what they do. Uh, If he's not 
at his absolute best. You know, I, I struggle to to think where the goals are going to come from. You know, and, and I don't mean that the goals have to come from Felipe, but it's just an easy attack to to defend against if you know if that front forward isn't doing the work. You know, I, Zakani has been on an absolute tear, but he he's, he needs somebody to to give him a little bit of space and draw a defender. So um, we haven't quite seen Milinkovic at his best the past few matches. So. You know, this is going to be a big one. Um, you know, fortunate not to have a, a Kessier, you know, out, out there who matches up pretty well against uh, Milinkovic. So you know, hopefully this is the one where he steps up. But again, to answer your question in, in a very long-winded way, I think it's Felipe Anderson. So, I yeah, I do, just real quick. So, Matt, yeah. just to toss this question to you, and I, th- I think it's an interesting point. So, Felipe, we know how great he did. Probably the, he statistically was the second best dribbler in Serie A last year behind Rafael Leal. In a match in which Teo Hernandez is, is absent for Milan, this would have been a huge advantage out wide for Lazio to help create. That's not there. I want to talk about Teo's absence, Matt. If you wanted to hop on the Immobile thing, mm-hmm. feel free. But just the pure absence of Teo here. Serginho Dest is going to be sliding in there. We saw him um, play that. He got some more minutes in the Super Cup, and then he also was playing in Coppa Italia. We all know as Americans uh, it, how Serginho is moving forward. Moving forward, he's very talented. He's flawed defensively, very flawed. And when he's going to be out of position now, how do you think he's going to be able to handle a side like Lazio in a system like Sadi's? Like, what, what what is your anticipation for him? Well, I think you know, I think this game is going to be extremely open. Um, I think the way the way that Milan have been defending um, or lack of defending, um, I think really bodes well for Lazio in this spot, right? You know, Sean, you touched upon you know not having a reference point up front. And that's valid because the you know, Immobile is, you know, good say what you want about his his international record. This guy is one of the best Serie A strikers of all time. He's got bo- a tremendous body of work. He has a great record against Milan. So it, the, his stats speak to that. So when you don't have him, obviously you take a hit. But I think if you're going to have a match without Immobile and it's going to come against Milan, this is the time to do it when Milan are really spiraling defensively. So, you know, you you have guy big big bodied central defenders and big bodied midfielders like Milinkovic Savic, who via set pieces Milan really struggle in that department. They got conceded two goals against Roma um, in the dying moments there. That's what you know obviously you know, squandered the three points for them. So I think if you're if you're going to catch Milan at this point without some of your top guys, then I think this is where you want them, and you're doing it at home, so that's an added bonus. But I think getting back to the um, the, the topic the regarding Justin and and, and um, Teo Hernandez, I think it's pretty it's pretty pretty sh- straightforward, right? Like you know, Teo Hernandez is a top three, four left back in the world. I'm not going to say he's number one because everyone's going to say that they have their own guys, and that's fair. We all know how I feel. I think he's on his day. He's the best post World Cup. He hasn't shown it. Um, and if look, if you're uh, EA Sports for a FIFA Ultimate Team player, and you lean to those for 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 validation he's in the team of the year so say what you want about that but the guy is an absolute demon when he's on um but muscle fatigue muscle fatigue says a lot about some of his recent performances right post world cup he hasn't been making those trailblazing runs he hasn't been overlapping with rafael leao so that's going to be another thing right is does milan have a different solution to break down and unlock lazio's defense that has been very very strong, all things considered, or is it going to be more swing it to Layao and you cross your fingers and say a prayer and hope that he can break down the defense? I, I don't know. I think this game is going to call on Giroud. It's going to call on Brahim Diaz, but I think it's going to be a frenetic pace. I think it's going to be a pretty open game. Um, and maybe that does favor a guy like Dest, right? You know what he may leave exposed mm-hmm. in the back could invite him to go forward. And it might be that type of, high octane high tempo game we're talking goals 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 so uh, if you're neutral in this one then you're definitely going to be pretty pleased to see you know uh, some excitement some some offensive powerhouse no. but i think that this um th- this loss for milan without question given how thin they are in creating goals and getting goals um not having tail there is is a big loss yeah not only not only um look just thinking about the the tail side I mean, that side of the field for us, Lazio is getting Lazzari back, who was suspended from yeah. yellow card accumulation. So, you know, we know, you know, one of the paciest players, you know, in the league. And if if Dest, you know, is not able to stay in front of him, it's going to certainly give Lazio 
a ton of opportunities, particularly on, on the counter, but, you know, not having Felipe, look, they Pedro uh, still plays very much like he's a 27 year old in terms of his pace and quickness. So it'll be really interesting matchup to see, you know, what that they do um, with Dest handling either one of those two players. I, th- I think, I think Rafa is, th- I think, you have to worry about him. I, I he did not play better against anyone else in the league last year. Um, Copa Italia, Serie A, Rafael Leao. I'm sorry to say, Jean, just absolutely took over these matches. He's such a difficult player to to worry about, and easier when Teo Hernandez isn't there, sure. But I think he's kind of evolved into this player at this point that you have to double him in this league to yeah. stop him. It's one game. thing in the Champions League, like one one versus one, you're dead. Um, maybe that causes Lazzari to be a little bit more timid and, and not take as many risks moving forward. Um, but again, I think it's someone like Benacer, is he going to step up, have these proper possessions? And, and like you said, Lazzari came back, Sandro Tonali is back. He wasn't playing against Lecce as well. Uh, it's been a six day break in between this and the super cup mentally. I think Lazio in a better spot. I know everything that we addressed here, but I think there's a lot of pressure on Milan. This Napoli is running away with this title. Um, they, I think they've been giving some breaks now. Inter's loss today has been massive. You could say the same for Lazio as well. It's good. It could be a big one. I think a draw would benefit both. But I, the way things are going for Milan, I think there's more pressure on them to grab a win here. Um, away record aside, that's been really great the past couple of seasons. It's still difficult to go into the Olympic and win a game like this. This isn't something that you just do because they've been great at it. This is It's still difficult every single time. I think you're right about Giroud, though. The guy has to step up. Whether it's muscle fatigue or not, he's getting a lot of minutes in this. Does Rigi feature? Um, I think Rebic. that's where Milan... Yeah, that's... Who, who knows with that guy? He's he's either going to turn it up or or just be one of the worst things that you've ever seen. <laughs> I think I think with Milan, it's going to come down to the depth, and I think the depth is going to benefit them in this match. Origi is there. CDK, I know a lot of people like to rip on him, but who knows what kind of appearance he makes. It's, it's going to be interesting. And to me, I, I actually can't even pick a winner again. I really just don't know. I just, I, I've, I've kind of put in this position with this club at this point that anything wouldn't surprise me. If Lazio go in front, wouldn't shock me for a moment. And they come back and they just scrap for this 1-1 draw that's just largely entertaining in a Serie A aspect. But as in terms of good football, it's probably not going to be that great. I could easily see that happening. Um but overall, I, I I wonder for you two, who who is who's got more pressure on them in this match to get a result? Is it Lazio? Is it Milan? Because I feel like at home at Lazio, you could absolutely make the case this is something they need to get a result from. Uh, would you be happy with a draw, Sean? Is that something that you're okay with considering Immobile's absence? Or yeah, I mean, I, I think I I would. Um, obviously, it, it's easier to say that with Inter uh, dropping points. Um, yeah you know, it doesn't do a lot to help. I don't know. I think it's, it's tough. Um, look, we, we talked about it a little bit before we started recording, but Lazio is, is, is one of the most Jekyll and Hyde teams ever. Uh, you know, we, we can come out and play incredibly well against the best of them and, and we can look like Scudetto contenders um and then we can drop absolute stinkers against Lecce and we can go on really poor runs so it's it's such a tough one to predict because at least on my end you know Lazio is just completely unpredictable now they tend to they tend to to wake up for big matches yep um you know, and, and, See, you're struggling too with it. It's the weirdest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the weirdest tough. match. It really you is. Know, and not having Immobile just gives me much, much less confidence. Um, now, Felipe has looked okay in, in a couple games, and and he's found the back of the net for two consecutive matches. So, you know, that's where I I, I, I think I would be fine with a draw if I had to predict. I'd take the easy way out and, and say it'd be a draw. But look, you. Matt said it. If if not now, facing Milan right now is is the best time. If, yeah. Especially if we're not going to have Immobile doing it at home. No Theo. Uh, we've got everybody else healthy. You know, 
I, I mean, they've they've got to do it. There's a lot of pressure to get it done now. Set, set piece is going to be huge. I think set yeah, piece and- is going to be huge with this. Tatarusanu is kind of something we just like gloss over at this point. Um, it's, a, it's a massive absence with no Mike Manion. Um, you guys are lucky it, it, for you on 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 the fortunate side for you guys. Lazio is abysmal when it comes to set pieces. So. Um, you know, it's I think a free kick, kick from Milinkovic. Just we not make everybody. Out. We make even yeah. the worst <laughs> stepping teams look phenomenal. Please. Tammy Abraham was sucking all season long. All of a sudden, this guy appears out of nowhere off his headpiece. It's fair. It's fair. On the it's... corners, though, I mean, Luis Alberto, absolutely dreadful when it comes to taking yeah. a corner. So I think it's um, a free kick with Milinkovic. Yeah. I think yep. I could see this. God, I hope I don't clip this for us. <laughs> I, I, um, well, I don't know if you were giving your actual prediction there, Sean, but. Um, I, I actually think that this this game is going to be two two. I think okay. again, I'm sticking with my you know high octane volume type game here, where I think you're going to have mistakes, you're going to have very open match, you're going to have your your usual suspects uh, scoring goals. I think Milinkovic is going to get a header, or he's going to get some sort of ridiculous goal. I think he's just that type of technical technical beast, combining his his the ability on the ball, but the physical prowess that he has to really assert himself into games. And I think the way that Milan are defending right now, it's hard for me to, to, to go and have the confidence to say they're going to go into Rome and they're going to win this game. No matter what their history in recent years looks like in this fixture, I just don't quite have the confidence. I will say this, though. I think you might get into a position where you're know, given the, the delicate – state of where Milan is currently yeah. and also that Lazio are also trying to get a result here because yes Milan aren't playing well but they also have to respect the fact that Milan are still the the, the reigning champions it could be one of those matches where you know, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a 1-1 and then it gets to like the 75th minute and everyone both teams are like well we're going to take the draw like and we're not going to risk it I think it could be something like that. I'm not saying that would be the best result for either team because I think that, you know, you can make a case that given that inter drop points, you know, the way that Juventus are you know, suffering with their suffering and really trying to keep pace with Napoli and kind of be in that conversation for top four, three points is vital today. Or for, not today, but tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah, people will be watching this today when they wake up. Yeah, it really could go <laughs> either way. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if it's an absolute stinker, like a dud. Like, Milan don't have any answers. They can't do anything up front. Or it's... It's that 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 awakening moment for Milan. We're like, okay, they had their four or five games because just again, just to just to recall this, even before the international break, they barely got the result against Fiorentina. Mm-hmm. They lost to Torino in the league and they mm-hmm. tied Cremonese. So this has been like months of pretty suspect play. Now Martino just mentioned it, and we all know that Milan hasn't technically lost in the league, but man, when you look at the way they beat Salernitana, the Lecce game coming back coming back from 2-0 down away and the Roma game, it feels like they've lost two games. They, they, they should have won Salernitana like 7-1. It, so it just the, it ch- the opportunities, like, yeah. It feels like they've lost two or three games in a row. And at this point last year in this 18, round 18, round 22, this is where Milan actually had their worst skid. I think Nemanja, who's a, a big, you know, shout out to him. He's a huge, huge Milan fan, really good football expert. He's a Jokic guy, yeah. by the way, Sean. He, so. Yeah, he's, he, he, <laughs> he points, he's been tweeting out and basically saying at this point last year is where Milan had their worst skit. And we're seeing it again this year. Super. Well, I, yeah, go, go, go. No, I was going to say, you just to, to the question earlier, I, I do think, um, I mean, really looking at that table, I think Lazio does have more pressure because. Okay. You know, the, the difference for them is, is, is three points puts them in third, right? A, a draw or a loss keeps them at sixth, you know, for you guys, your win, win or loss, you're, you're still in second, you know, granted for Napoli, they're, it's going to grow and that you can essentially it. write yeah. it off, yeah. but that, that margin is, 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 you know, given the way Napoli's playing, that margin for all intents and purposes is is pretty much done. You know, I don't want to. Anything could happen. It's so. the most epic collapse in Serie A history. If it happens. absolutely, and and it would be more of an indictment on Napoli than anything else. So, you know, in terms of pressure, I, I think Milan can look at this and and say like we, we've got nothing to lose because we're we're we've got we're That's we're money. pretty sound here with the Inter losing. You know, they're they're in a a fine enough position, but for Lazio. If if they don't win this, it just puts an incredible amount of pressure, and all of a sudden Roma and Atalanta are ahead of them, and it becomes a lot, lot tougher. 
your schedule is not so kind, similar to ours. You have Fiorentina right after this one, and then you face Juve. Um, and then Verona, I mean, they've been abysmal. They're probably going down this year at this rate. And then it's Lazio again, and then you got um, – and Yeah, Atalanta, yeah, excuse me. And then you have uh, European Cups. It's It gets a little bit easier after that, but, that, but you're right about that stretch up until the 11th. Yeah. I mean, listen, at this point, we're, we're basically two peas in a pot. So – Quickly, I, I think it would be poor of all of us to just not bring up this whole Juve situation because it absolutely impacts the top four and where Lazio could be. Say this is upheld, and as if people don't know at this point, it's either 15 points for Juve or nothing. So that's what's going to happen with that appeal. We're going to find out the reasoning, I believe, in about five days at this rate because um, it's been a few days now. Um, it might be even a little bit more than that. On a scale of like zero to hundred percent, Sean, what do, what are your odds of, of Lazio making it into the top four? Um, Cause I think they would just sneak in. It seems as if Inter are keeping Milan Skriniar throughout the rest of the season, that would have been a big boost for everybody chasing that top four because of what just happened. He's also suspended next week because he was horrendous today. Um, yeah. How, how are you feeling about that? It's, it's probably going to rely on Immobile's return. For sure. Um, I, I would say a 55% chance that we finish in the top four. Um, you know, I feel just slightly better than, than, than I, than I think that we would miss out. And, and a little bit of that is um, I do think we are a better team on paper than Roma. I think, um, I you know, the, the, the way we look, just the eye test alone would tell you that think Roma's gotten away with 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 some games and some really poor performances that they've been able to walk away with with a fortunate three points so um and and look Atalanta has I went into the season thinking that this was the end of Atalanta and you know kudos to them because the way that they keep retooling and staying competitive you know, for, for a club um, that just doesn't go out there and, and spend a ton of money. It's remarkable. Look, 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 Lookman's like a top three signing in this league. And that's behind Napoli's like historic summer yeah. transfer window. This is, I think only Kim Min Jay, you could say in Cavada have been better signings at this. Right? I mean, Lookman has 14 goal contributions and nobody's yep. like batting an eye as like a top player this season. Yeah. Um, they're, Everything that they do, it, it, it's remarkable. So, so um, but, but it just, and, and, and it's, it's pesky and it's annoying. No. Um, but if Lazio doesn't get it done, you know, particularly with, with this continued group sticking together with Roma, not being, you know, at their best, they're so reliant on Dybala with Atalanta seemingly taking a little bit of a hit, but they're, they're still hanging on and Juve no. catching that minus 15. And look, it's a topsy turvy in, in, in this year has been wild, but Inter catching losses like that and not looking great. You guys not necessarily flying high. If they don't do it now, yeah. It's yeah. it's it's really, really tough to um to be okay with that. You know, any other year I would look at our roster and I would say we're a European team, we're a Europa yeah. team, it is fine, it falls within you know the money that we spend, but I just it's it's less being confident in Lazio and more just thinking some of these teams around us are just worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I'm 55% confident that we would make top four. And and the interesting part of this as well that we're not used to, as you even mentioned, Matt, with the schedule, we have half a season. This is the halfway point. Um, and, it, and it feels like a lot is wrapped up, but so much could change. Yeah. And, I, and I find it fascinating. Again, I know we've gotten doses of it the past couple seasons with the reboot where – Damn man, I I know I feel bad for you guys because that that was it was possible. They really could have done it. They really could have done it during that COVID year, but they could have. It was the a title. team of destiny. I, I, it in felt my, like in it, my yeah. heart, and I'm never one to speak it out. And and I've gone through way too much pain and not you know. But in my heart, I honestly believe we were winning the scudetto. I thought it was a team of destiny. Yeah. Twenty years since our last scudetto in 2020, we we brought back the same. And it was, and it was like and you're, you're riding like you're riding Mobile to the top, like yeah. And, you know, we just... There wasn't a worse type of built team to have a condensed season restart. Yeah. Like, there was, yeah. like, Lazio was primed week in, week out. That's all they needed. 
I, I felt bad. But again, I think that plays a factor into what's going on here. I think you have better depth. I think you have uh, a better manager for that. He's suited mm-hmm. for multiple yeah. competitions. And I know Saudi has gotten a lot of stick about rotations, but if there's been a manager that we've seen slip up more than anyone, it's been Simone Inzaghi. No disrespect to him. We see it again. Inter have six losses this season. I tweeted out the statistic today. The previous two seasons, they had seven losses in total. It says everything you need to know. They had one draw all season long. They they just got their first draw. They were the only team in the top five leagues not to have that. I, I mean, just the way Inter operates, you could see them slipping up. Um, Sean, we really appreciate your time. I know it's been a little bit longer than uh, we've uh, had you on here for. I have one more question for you. Matt, I apologize. This is not soccer related or football related. I'm a big Luka Doncic fan, okay? And also my guy Jason Tatum's in the MVP hunt as well. I don't think he ends up getting it. Does Luka finally get his MVP award? I don't think so. Um, would would love him to. Uh, the, the team is just it, it not consistent enough. Um, it's one-dimensional. It's, it's going to be really, really tough uh, finishing at, at a five or six seed. And look, yeah. I know there's been precedent for it with Russell Westbrook, but I, I think people looking back probably wouldn't have awarded him. I think you know, it's just that, tied that breaking MVP. breaking Oscar Robertson's uh, record for holding that triple double per season yep. was the only thing that could have superseded it. Now, and it takes away from what Luca's doing because Luca's a savant. Like anyone who uh, doesn't it, know, it's, like, it's incredible. But yeah. again, you know, and and we're we're in such a great uh, period with the league. I mean, you've got you know again guys that'll that, that probably get knocked because they've already won a couple, but. Giannis Stupid, and Jokic yeah. are, are just insane seasons again from them. And, and obviously Matt's, Tatum's, Matt's a Sixers guy too. So he's a big Jojo. Uh, yeah, NBA I, I guy. I mean, he may get his. Yeah. The They're never going to give it to him, man. Sixers and the Vikings, man. Like, <laughs> well, he's got, well, he's I'm Cowboys, but I'm no a Cowboys one, fan. Yeah. So look, I, I don't even know what an NFC championship looks like. So, well, it's been, it's been a little while. It's the nineties were a lot more kind to you for sure. Yeah, um, look, I I didn't get to enjoy any of it. I became okay, uh, okay. an all Dallas sports fan in 1996. I moved from Italy to Dallas. Uh, That's for the a few worst. Years. That's the worst. And so you've only really had Dirk. I've had well, you know, I'm a, a big Dallas Stars fan, so I got to stand okay, the okay, I got an okay. NBA title, but from the yeah. Cowboys, it's been nothing but pain and misery. I've seen more playoff wins than I'm a Jets fan. Jags Jags have seen more playoff wins than me, so. Yeah. Uh, but yes, but plug everything else. Um, Charlotte FC, terrific debut season, in my opinion. As we know, very difficult for, for that to transpire. We've seen Miami struggle. Cincinnati not going to open that can of worms. They didn't even know what Jop Stom looked like. How do you guys feel going into this season and just promote some of the stuff? Because uh, my former employee at 137, we knew you guys were doing a great job within the community. If you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, man, we're, we're excited for, for year two, uh, obviously coming off a really tough time with the loss of Anton walks uh, this week, but uh, it, look, we're, we're, we're thrilled about the team that our technical side has put together. I mean, last year we barely missed out on a playoff spot, really, really competing uh with with a lot of things happening uh, manager change in our mm-hmm. inaugural season <laughs> yeah. uh, but look we, we've got a guy uh managing the squad by the name of christian latanzio who is managed you know with some of the top managers around the world uh, a mancini guy who he who he managed alongside with at city uh, uh managed with fabio grosso so great italian legends Damn. you know was was with patrick Vieira in france and at city uh, at uh, NYCFC. So, you know, he's come in, he's, he's known for developing guys, was able to turn this thing around. And, and there is just, we're excited about some of the signings. Enzo Copetti, you know, out of Argentina is just an absolute goal scoring machine. The way he plays is, is, is just this level of intensity. So uh, we're excited, man. I think we're going to have a really good team that ends up competing you know, I mean, it's, it's playoff. We've said it playoffs are bust for us, you know, in year two. So there's definitely a lot of expectation, but, and what what we saw in terms of just the fan experience, the incredible, incredible atmosphere, you know, you you guys got to make it down sometime because it's, it's been 
It's been a lot of fun. It, it's very it's kind of underrated fun. fandom in that part of the country for the sport. A lot of people yeah. would just assume it doesn't exist, but what they do in Tennessee as well, just I, I just see Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta is incredible. Man. It's yeah, incredible. I was even, um, yeah, I was even in Nashville too a couple of years ago for like um like Memorial Day weekend, and they had like the Champions League final on at that point, and like bars like they the like, supporter clubs for like the for Chelsea, like it was it was mob man, like this legit. Yeah, this, no, there's an incredible, incredible, incredible soccer market, soccer culture here. I mean, collegiate incredible programs in the Carolinas. Yep. So there's just the youth programs are are insanely strong, but. You know, the way this community rallied to, to come together. A lot of folks that didn't know anything about the sport just came out and just fell in love with it, you know, which is which is why I love working you know, in Major League Soccer so much. It's just seeing the growth of this game. And um, day by day, it gets a lot closer to, to the leagues that I grew up watching and, and wanting it to be. So, yeah. you know, we're pretty pumped about it. Um, yeah, I think we'll be competitive. I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting out there and just playing some games and, and you know, one month yeah, out, correct? The twenty fifth. Yeah, I believe, February twenty right? fifth will, will yeah, be our first one. Year. Excited to our first road game will be exciting. We're we're gonna actually yeah. be opening up the building for St. Louis FC. So the new oh, expansion awesome. team in in, awesome. in town. So yeah, we're excited. It'll be fun. Awesome. All right. Um, follow Sean McIntosh. We had that. Under yeah, the follow, entire time. follow me. Um, follow Lazio World. Follow Charlotte FC. If you don't got a Major League Soccer club and and you follow Serie A, we're we're, we're a fun one to watch. We've got an Italian manager and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll play a nice intriguing brand of football. Of course, Sean, thank you so much. You guys can follow myself and Matt. Uh, you guys know the handles. We don't need to repeat that. Sean, thank you so much. Once again, man, best yeah. of luck to Charlotte FC and Lazio after tomorrow. Um, appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks fellas. Cool.